So I want to talk about this push for a central banking digital currency, right? So here is the uh, European Central Bank, uh, Christine Lagarde. Is that how you say her name? I don't know how to say her name. Uh, so listen to what she has to say. But first of all, fantastic lighting, great camera. And she looks magnificent. Really, really nice job. <laughs> Honestly, I wish I had that. Whoever lit that, I would love them come and set up my studio for me. Here we go. Where do we stand? We central bankers. We have been operating as a monetary anchor in relation to the commercial <laughs> banks and the private money. If we are not in that game, if we are not involved in experimenting, in innovating in terms of digital uh, central bank money, we risk losing the role of anchor that we have played uh, for many, many decades. And we have historical examples of period where the central bank uh, monetary anchor was not there and that precipitated crisis after crisis. That certainly was the case at the time of the free banking in the 19th century. Do we want to go back to those days? Probably not. I would say certainly not from our vantage we, point. As a result, she acts like there are. First of all, it's hilarious that she acts like we've solved the banking crisis have, problem. Doesn't the current <laughs> system cause that as well? Every couple of years, there seems like there's a new banking meltdown. <laughs> we just had to bail out three of our biggest banks just the last couple of months here in the United States. So this idea that be, they they they're the uh, the calming factor or the stabilizing factor there or, or if there is the, as if there is a stabilizing factor in banking. All right, let's go a little bit. That's what's crazy. All right, hang on. Which we have to respond to the demand for those digital payments in order to maintain the role of anchor that we have uh, been playing uh, <laughs> regularly. So now here's what she, uh, without that beautiful lighting, here we are. She Here's what she's really saying. Now we have in Europe this threshold above 1,000 euros, you cannot pay cash. If you do, you're on the gray market. So you take mm -hmm. your risk. You get caught you are fined or you go in jail. So you go to jail. So what in the, so let me bring in the gentleman from the Duran. This all seems very scary to me. So what she just said from the central bank is that uh, they're going to institute a system where if you spend, you, you can't use cash. And if you do use oh. cash, that's going to be against the law and you're going to get fined or put in prison Jeez. because they want to be able to track every purchase that you make um is this scary to you bo uh, both of you well of course it's extremely scary because um it, it, it actually isn't really what central banking is supposed to be about central banking is about regulating the monetary system i mean this is the theory it's not the practice but the theory is you regulate the monetary system in order to facilitate in order to benefit the economy now what has that got to do with tracking every single spend <laughs> that people make? It's not about that. It's it's uh, really central banks operating as an arm of the surveillance state. That there is no other reason to do this than to do it in that way, and that's essentially what Lagarde is telling us. She talks about you know comes up with all kinds of pieces of cod history about the 19th century and what happened then and as if that has any relevance to the realities of today's world um, but it's all done in order to and, and you know suggesting that there's a huge demand for digital currencies demand from whom exactly <laughs> but ultimately <laughs> it's all about it's all about being able to track every single financial transaction get a better understanding of what people are doing and the better to control them in the end because there is no other reason to do it than that can you can you think of any examples in recent history where they were able to control people who were standing up against the status quo and the establishment i can't think of one can you think of one <laughs> well i think we can all think of many but i mean this is a new system i mean because the technologies have now made these kind of systems possible. I mean, up to now, up to recently, governments couldn't track money flows in this kind of minute way that Lagarde would like us, 
would like governments and would, ultimately governments, I can say, just not just governments, but, you know, the powers that be, the deep states, the apparatuses and all that, they now have the means to do that. And of course, economic life, uses, uses of money is absolutely essential for everybody in the way that we live our lives. We, uh, you know, we can't function in our modern economies without money. So if they could control our monies, our money to that extent, if they could switch it, presumably if it's digital, they could switch it off. Alex is more of an expert on these things than I am. But, you know, that seems to me where all this is heading, or at least where they would like it to go. Yeah. Whether so, they'll be successful is of course another is another thing. So so when you say they, they could they could uh, sh shut off your 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 money. So if we go to a digital currency, what that means is that then the central bankers and the government and the establishment will be able to determine if you can pay your bills, if you can travel, if you can have money to put gas in your car to go. So they they can sh just like they did to the truckers in Canada. That was a scary moment for everybody here anyway at this show. Uh, that showed that a uh, government acting at the behest of uh, corporate interests can rob you of your, strip you of your liberty, freedom to protest. All they have to do is say you're a terrorist because in the United States they passed the law. They got rid of habeas corpus, which meant you were able to get a speedy trial. And all they have to do is say that you are a terrorist. And like in in Dapple, they said you were you were uh, environmental terrorists. <laughs> so, and then if you use uh, if you're using crypto, they can say you're a uh, economic terrorist, and all they have to do is say you're a terrorist, and you don't have any rights, and they put you in jail, and they can shut down your bank account, and you're done. And that's the system we're moving into right now. Uh, and nobody's demanding this except the bankers and the establishment, right, Alex? No, no one wants this. I don't, I don't know anyone that wants this, but but you're exactly right, uh, Jimmy. They can take the money because you're going to have a digital wallet. It's going to be an app on your phone is what it's going to be. And it's going to hold your digital currency. Oh, no. Now they can put an expiration on that money. So they can say you've got in your paycheck, you just got a thousand dollar paycheck. You have three months to spend it. You don't spend it after three months. Poof, it goes away. What? It's going to be on your on your mobile device, which means that it could be tracking all of your movements. So you went to a protest downtown. Well, what were you doing at that protest downtown? Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, the whole thing is going is going to, to track all your movements, all your spending. It, it can be time sensitive. It's complete control of of the individual. And this is exactly what the European Union was built for this is the purpose of something like the european union so here we had whitney webb on recently she addressed this she said this now we're reaching the end of the line and uh, essentially to avoid pitchforks at their door we're being ushered into a paradigm of central bank digital currencies yes um and complete surveillance so that people when they figure out how screwed they've been uh won't be able to do anything about it uh, it's gonna. It's coming to America. They already have a pay a website set up for the digital currency. It's like Fed Now or something like that. Or uh, dot, have you heard about that, Whitney? Yeah, Fed, Fed Now launches in July. It's a. They claim it will make payments faster, and it has nothing to do with central bank digital currencies. Uh, even though you know the vast majority of every country in the world is developing some sort of type of central bank digital currency, and the central bankers around the world have essentially admitted whether it's Augustine Carson's head of the I, BIS or someone like Christine Lagarde, essentially saying that it's about control. It's not about money. It's about ending financial anonymity, being able to surveil every transaction where every uh, dollar goes and is spent, and being able to control what people can and can't buy. And essentially, if you control the money to that extent, you can control what people can or can't do, where they can and can't go. I mean, you know, the possibilities for them are really endless, but do we really want to give up all of that freedom to people that um, engage in ex extensive cr criminal activity and have for a long time and can, you know, deceive the public? I mean, it's it's crazy. So here is that gentleman she was speaking about, Aug uh, Augustin Cartens, the general manager of the Bank of International Settlements. Listen to what he says. Aren't our analysis on CBDC, in particular for the use of general, to the general use, uh, we tend to establish the equivalence with cash. Uh, and there is a huge difference there. 
Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who's using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, the, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also... So he just said that the central bank will have full control over the way you're able to spend your money and... We will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, uh, to what cash is. Uh, Wait, is he for or against this? He's for it. <laughs> so he, he, it sounds like he's talk, telling you the bad things about it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but yeah. So is that surprising to hear him talk like that, Alex? Well, he's, he's not speaking to, to us. He's speaking to, to the other elites in the room. You see, if you're if you're one of these billionaires, if you're one of these guys that's at the top, this is great for you. This is this is exactly what you want. You're going to make sure that that you can keep everyone down, and no one is ever going to rise up to to challenge you. Whether you're a billionaire businessman or whether you're you're a politician in in Europe or in the United States, this is this is exactly what you want. So he's speaking. He's not. He's not addressing us. He's addressing he, he, the people in the room, and they're saying this is great. This is great. And he just says, by the way, could he look like more of a criminal character, like from a from a uh, some he kind looks of like uh, Sasso from Carlito's Way? <laughs> I get the money. <laughs> he looks like a character out of a Dick Tracy movie. Yeah. Uh, Let's anyway. see how he likes where they can control, but he buys pie. <laughs> <laughs> We're shutting off your pie money. <laughs> So here is the get back. We're going to bring her back in. Boy, she's the, uh, she did not have the same lighting person, but she, here is the president of wow. the European Central Bank. And listen to how she talks about how this is all about control. I have a question I'm, about I'm, I'm also good. Uh, By the way, she's being pranked right now. This It's amazing how many European politicians get pranked. But here she is being pranked and she admits it. What? User of uh, electronic money. So my question, uh, you are introducing the electronic euro, as I know. Yeah. So yeah. How, can I, um, how can switching to an electronic currency help? Well, two things. Number one, it will be decided in October. So we are preparing the ground. We want to be ready. Um, we want to be trained. But it will not be decided until October 23. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm... Personally convinced that we have to move ahead is a situation like the one we are in now. We are mm -hmm. dependent on the supply of gas by a, a very unfriendly country. Mm -hmm. I don't want Europe to be dependent on an unfriendly country's currency. For instance, I don't know, you know, the Chinese mm -hmm. currency, the Russian currency, the mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. or dependent on a friendly currency, but which is activated by a private corporate entity like, you know, Facebook or like uh, Google or anybody like that. I'm a user of Bitcoin, too. So I had bought it uh, when it started, and uh, I, I hope that uh, it also will work in for the special system. And uh, I know there are many protests in Europe uh, against uh, the electronic euro. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the reason? You know, it's, it's the beauty of Europe. It has different uh, positions. If you ask in Northern Europe, for instance, uh, in the Netherlands, they're quite happy to see the e-euro coming. If you ask... No, no let me just bring in my two pals from Europe. Is that true? That the people in the Netherlands are all, all about this digital currency? Well, I've never heard that. I mean, it might be true. I've, I've never seen any opinion poll that suggests it. Okay. I suspect if, people, <clears throat> if it was explained to people what it is, which of course it might not be, they might not be so keen. Yeah. Given, given the kind of society that the Netherlands traditionally is, which is a very individualistic libertarian society in many respects. 
All right, let's hear, let's hear the rest of what she has to say. Here she comes about control. Young German um, man, he'll say, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. As I said, I don't want Meta, Google, or Amazon to suddenly come up with a currency that will take over the sovereignty of Europe. I don't want a foreign currency to become the currency of trading within Europe. So we have to be ready. No, the problem is they don't want to be controlled. Uh, they don't want to... Uh... Yeah, but you know what? You know what? <laughs> now we have in Europe this threshold above 1,000 euros, you cannot pay cash. If you do, mm. you're on the gray market. Ah. So you take mm -hmm. your risk. You get caught, you are fined, or you go in jail. But, you know, the, the, the digital euro is going to have a limited amount of control. There will be control, you're right. You're completely right. Mm -hmm. We are considering whether for very small amounts, you know, anything that is around 300, 400 euros, we could have a mechanism where there is zero control. But that could be dangerous. The terrorist attacks on France uh, back uh, 10 years ago were entirely financed by... So there it is. So now we have to control the currency, even three or 400 euro transactions because of terrorism. We're gonna. We're, it's there to. It's there to protect you. We're not doing this to control you. We're doing this to protect you from terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> so let me bring in the Durant. So there she is. She admits it's about control, and she admits that letting people spend even three or four hundred dollars or euros at a time could be dangerous if it's not tracked. That's shocking. How does this go over in Europe? Well, it's not been discussed to anything like the extent that it should be but the moment people understand what it's about they are overwhelmingly opposed to it certainly that's the case in britain i'm sure it's the case right across europe and she talks about young german men uh being in favor of this thing well i know germany reasonably well especially given its history i'm pretty sure that young german men are, and women and old people and people of every age in germany would not welcome this at all if they understood exactly what it was. And I suspect before very long, they will understand it too, by the way. Yeah. Okay. This what is explained to people, people in Europe, they're not going to like it, but uh, <coughs> I have one quick comment about this. I think a lot of the leadership has, has been emboldened by the lockdown and how that worked out yeah. so well for uh... them that they believe that they'll be able to to now just take it a step further with the with the CBDCs because I think they saw you know we can actually lock down society for 3 months 6 months and they're just going to go along with it so why not why not get a digital uh, currency in there and see what happens and ram it down their throats <laughs> see what happens just like we rammed down mandates and yeah every travel restrictions and lockdowns we just ram it down their throats and lie about it all along. <laughs> Say it's, for, it's, it's, it's to fight terrorism. That's what it's really about. Huh? Well, I want to thank my guests today for spending time from the Duran, Alex Cristoforo and Alexander Macoris. I really appreciate your expertise, your insight, and taking time to spend uh, to in, in, inform our audience. Uh, I hope to see you again soon. Definitely. Thank, thank you. you. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special, COVID Lies Are Funny. <laughs> <laughs>